this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by the incomparable author, Scott Sigler. We play another Choose Your Own Adventure. We write a sequel to the Brock Sockman and Rabbi Manischewitz story and so much more. Buy Scott's book, Pandemic, and then watch us on NSFW Show starting right now. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 213, recorded on January 14th, 2014. The Nine Fangs of My Aunt. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW1. And Shutterstock. With over 1 million high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW114. And Ting. Ting is a mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for only what you use. Ting doesn't require a contract and offers unlimited devices on one shared plan. To save 25 bucks on your first Ting device, visit nsfw.ting.com. That's nsfw.ting.com. Hey, Ron. Hey, Billy. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> SFW, the new show for the win, the new sauce for the web, and that's the show that is nominally safe for work. Oh, hello there, chat realm. I didn't see you. It's me, Brian Brushwood, from Twit's Austin Ancillary location, joined as always by the center of the universe, right there, the heart of the internet, Petaluma, California, Professor Justin Robert Reich the <laughs> third. What's up, yes, sir? It's the third Reich, as my older brothers would attest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was actually trying to reference like Robert Reich, the former Secretary of the Treasury. Yeah, he didn't in the do 1990s. so good with that. Well, and that's not good. I'll tell you what. That's uh, glad that you went with such an amazing reference that everybody picked up on it immediately. <laughs> yes, uh, Brian. We have uh, a real banger of a show, which is uh, our British oh, man. way of he, saying I'll tell you it's what, a he is sausage a banger. of a show. He bangs. Uh, he bangs. We bang it. We bang this show until it bleeds. That's the rule. And everybody who doesn't follow it will be punished accordingly. Punished we by bang who? this show until, until it, it's bleeding in the corner, weeping silently, wanting just saying, I just want a shower. That's how hard we bang this show. It's the banging of show on the internet. Brian, of all the jokes that like, you could follow further down the rabbit hole, we go with bang <laughs> till it bleeds right up top. <laughs> you couldn't leave that one what? alone. It was already middling saying, on the edge. You're like, no, 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 no. I, no, 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 no. I want to push this like five yards into the goal line. No, no that was that was true. We 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 push it five inches into, into the goal line anyway. No, oh, good God! All right, here we go. <laughs> the man joining us right here, Scott Ziegler, the author of the brand new book, Pandemic. It's uh, this one right here. There we go. He's pandemic. got the copy. Uh, it is released a week from today, right? That's yeah, a week from today. Yes. Yes. Everybody needs to go to scottsigler.com slash pandemic correct to buy it get all the details and you are going on a book tour going on a book tour tomorrow yes and hopefully i come out of the show without a bleeding prostate and i'm in better shape <laughs> to fly see now again like like really banging until it bleeds is just a a, a euphemistic there's thing. clearly Brian a t-shirt coming more in more specific with weeping in the corner and wanting a cold shower you take it even further with yep. a battered yes. prostate Battered prostate this is, this is why This is why we're, we're three peas in the pod, where yeah. two of the peas are making the third pea uncomfortable. <laughs> that third pea. It goes rapidly from metaphor to instruction. Yeah. The more details yeah. that we give, 
the more it becomes something other than just a metaphorical joke. That's when the Diamond Club switches from this to this right here, I oh, think. No. Something along those lines? No, 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 no. Those no. are battered inner thighs and labia. Um, okay. Brian, we're going to get right into things because uh, we had a hell of a time a couple episodes uh, ago when, when Scott was on. I think... I forget what, what book you were uh, you were on the on the warpath for at that point, but yep. we uh, we did two things, and we're going to repeat two bits tonight. Two bits. Just so you know, if you think this is a repeat of NSFW show where Scott Sigler comes on and does a choose your own adventure, and then we make up a story, well then congratulations, it basically is. But we're going to do the same thing mm -hmm. again, and hopefully it will be as funny. Uh, Brian, what choose your own adventure do we have? for Scott Sigler? Uh, well, here's the thing. We wanted something that would sort of take us on the hero's journey, uh, something that would um, uh, have both ups and downs, make us question who we are, where we came from, sort of, uh, sort of grow as a person. So we got a little gem called New Kids, Old Kids, so many kids <laughs> in school. Uh, designed for second graders. I don't know what everybody's Grade laughing at. Students. This sounds perfectly innocent and nice and wonderful. Yeah, I don't, yeah. This is... Actually, Brian, could you do me, and just because I want to give the the story the gravitas that it deserves, can you read yeah, that yeah. title slower and in a lower pitch voice? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. <clears throat> in fact, uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy this evening's performance of New Kids, <laughs> Old Kids. <laughs> So many kids <laughs> in school. Uh, okay, Brian, you're doing great. They're up to a great we're start great. right now. I like do it. Do me a favor. Oh. Um, can you do the ex that exact same thing, right? Oh. Yep, Except yep. at the end, add a big cackle as if it were echoing <laughs> throughout a castle. Or a tender sigh, either yeah. way. All right, all right. <clears throat> no, uh, and right, actually, uh, hold on. Gonna... Do me a favor. Add a tender sigh in between so many kids and in school. So just a, okay. a sigh after so many kids, and then a, a raucous laughter. Okay, and then uh, and then this will be us get, taking it in. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NSFW Theater and our production of New Kids, Old Kids. <laughs> <laughs> so many kids. <laughs> <laughs> in school. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're ready to begin. <laughs> yes, my promise to myself to keep it classy this time is really gonna, really gonna bear fruit. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. Let's go ahead. Let's jump. Let's dive right in. Uh, and of course, if you uh, do. Um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, as we begin, let me go ahead and center this so folks can read along with me. Uh, all right, so Brian, this is uh, how we did it last time. You will uh, read the uh, you you will read the the all the narrator parts. I will yep, read yes, yes. all of the uh, all of the the quotations. I will do the voices of the characters, and Scott, sure. of course, will decide where we are going in this story. And okay. because he has the author sensibility, now, yeah, now, we'll. Do, do you want me to actually pause for you to read those those words, or I, I guess so, or like, or do you want me to read it and then we kind of walk <coughs> through it? No, no, no. Just wait for me. I'm reading along with you. All right, got it. Here we go. <clears throat> Chapter one: A new day. <clears throat> the sun peeks through the window and says, "Hey, whoa!" <laughs> you wake up to the sound of birds chirping on the windowsill. It is Monday morning, and you have school today. You brush your teeth, change into your favorite clothes, <laughs> eat some bacon and eggs, and go out to the door to walk to school. Which way do you take to school? Uh, Is already, it the alley path? Is it the main road? Already I can tell the clothes for school is a gimp outfit. I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so there's only one way to roll when you're wearing the gimp outfit, and that is take the alley. So you're saying that <laughs> the gimp is going to jingle jangle his way. That's right. That's right. He's got the zipper mouth, but not the padlock key. <laughs> So, so, so gonna, he wakes up now. Now, when when you're brushing the teeth, you're talking about the zipper teeth. He he's like uh, yeah, uh, is, is keeping them 
There's no, don't, don't play ignorant, all right? Everybody knows that when you've got the GIMP <laughs> outfit in your home, and you're in the safe zone, you can have the zipper mouth open. You can talk, it's perfectly normal, but once okay, you leave the boundaries of the domicile, that thing's got to get zipped and locked. That's just the way it is. All right. So the kid, the uh, the eighteen-year-old the kid, the, the, the eighteen-year-old 18, <laughs> 18 protagonist of this story wakes up, puts on a gimp suit, and immediately takes it in the alley. That, a, that's what's going on. Set in Arkansas is fifteen. I'm just saying, we okay. set it in Arkansas. So we we're setting right. it in Arkansas. It's uh, he's fifteen, and this is officially uh, going to be adapted by Larry Clark for the feature film. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's take the alley path, chapter two, the alley path. You start down the alleyway just behind your house. A raccoon f fishes. <laughs> I thought that was a different word. <laughs> through the garbage. <laughs> and you see a little girl who is a few years younger than you, which means you must be 21 because there can't be any little girls younger than 18, which was the age we thought you were. Fortunately, you're 21, and she must be 18. She has darker skin <laughs> and is eating a banana. Yeah. <laughs> she smiles at you. It's going to be a good day at the school, boy, I can tell already. A boy who's a little bit older than you, which must be like 24, 25, runs out of the house and tosses the girl's banana <laughs> on the ground. She looks at him and starts to cry. What do you do? Do you keep walking or jump between the girl and the boy? Yeah, so far, this is a brilliant piece of literature that really just writes itself. I mean, really? I, so you're saying that, that you, are, you are totally on board right now. Uh, I, I you, are, like, you are riveted into this narrative. I like the narrative subtext. I like the neoclassical overtones of this. So mm -hmm. I believe that we are going to <laughs> jump between the girl and the boy. The highly charged erotic thrill ride. <laughs> New kids, old kids, so many kids at school. At school. <laughs> in school, in school. <clears throat> Chapter three, jump <laughs> between the girl and the boy. <clears throat> <laughs> you guys set this up, didn't you? No, this, no you wrote no. this shit. Oh, darn. <laughs> oh, oh, that was half. Check swing, check swing, check swing. Check nope. what? Uh, we went around. Out. Dang, mm -hmm. it. See, belt, question Chapter mark. Chapter three. Chapter three. Jump between the girl and the boy. You jump between the girl and the boy. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> you say? The boy furrows his eyebrows at you. I'm her big brother. I'm allowed <laughs> to boss her around. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you say? That was her banana. And you knocked it out of her hands! That's not very nice! Stop telling me what to do! The boy growls. He stalks away. At this point, I'd like to pause to discuss the following <laughs> questions with your teacher. Uh, hey, guys, uh, why is it important to stand up for people who are getting bullied? Okay. And what are some other people you could help call for help between some fighting kids? I, um, I have an answer for this. I believe that some things you can do to help people stop getting bullied are, you know, show constant support and love and, and let them know that you're there for them. As for the second part of the question, I think a horse mask is mandatory. <laughs> You really should have a giant floppy horse mask in order to make sure that people, you know, have that connection. That they're not. What was the second part of the question? I already uh, forgot. The second yeah, part of the question I, I, is: I, I, Who I, are I, some I, other people yeah. who you could uh, call for help to step uh, between some fighting kids? Yeah, horse people in a horse right, mask real, or full-on goalie outfit. Either way. So you need uh, a horse real, mask. Real quick, or real quick. Goalie. Can I ask you yeah. guys a serious question? Sure. Uh, let's say a hundred dollars was on the line. Uh, what would the last word be in the Google autocomplete if I started writing giant floppy horse? Would it be mask? No, I don't think it Are would be. Are we ready to put the $100 on the line? I Man, can't. dude, that might get interesting. I can say, <laughs> though, it might have something to do with your giant black cock shirt, though. That's... <laughs> You do have, oh, uh, for God. audio listeners, uh, Brian does have a there's giant a, there's black cock There's a big black cock, cock on, on my shirt. shirt. Yeah. No, there's there's definitely a big black cock on my shirt, uh, uh, but the uh, I, that's ne neither here nor there. Uh, all right, well, I mean, Brian, I feel like we do have a bit in the hundred dollar Google challenge. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, do you, do you want to do you want to lay down on it? You want let, let's 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 uh let, let let's come back to all it. Right, I feel like uh, right, we right, here to, we go. <clears throat> we need to go back to it, uh, Brian. Okay, uh, here we, we go. We go ahead, now... take, take it up. Take, oh, yeah, go, I, I, just I, take it right up there. There we go. Are this you is your okay? line. You ask the girl. Oh wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Are you okay? Oh, <laughs> you ask the girl. She nods and whispers. Thank you. You're welcome. You say. Must be getting late now. You should hurry on to school. Do you continue towards school or wait because there's no other options? Uh, Scott? I think that you're going to, uh, you're going to wait because other options will present themselves for <laughs> you. Man, get that big floppy horse thing out of my face. What are you doing? That big floppy oh, horse mask. Well, I'm just trying to say it. We're sitting here in the middle of a show. I turn around, and all of a sudden, Scott's just got this big floppy horse <laughs> thing, and I'm just like, ooh. There's a floppy horse appendage about the studio. It's nobody's problem. So it's uh, All right, here we go. You can... <clears throat> uh, chapter 5. Continue towards school. Oh, we As you approach right. the school, you can see the Canadian flag flying. That's the problem. <laughs> The, the voices of children who are definitely 18 waft towards you. Your classroom is, is the one with the daisies in front of the window. You enter the school and find your classroom easily. You store your lunch in the cubby hole and sit down <laughs> at your desk. Would, do you wait for class to start or question why this is called a choose your own adventure story? <laughs> After I get done storing my lunch in the cubby and entering the school through the back door, I'm sure. going to wait for class to start. <laughs> Chapter six, wait for class to start. Just as the teacher starts class, a new student walks in. He has lots of freckles and very red hair. Oh, hello. You must be Freddy Wrinkle. <laughs> Oh, teacher, Mrs. Molly says. <laughs> Freddie nods. He looks down at the ground. Welcome to our class, Freddie. <laughs> Mrs. Molly says. You can sit right there in that empty desk. She points to the desk right beside you. Freddy sits down beside you, and you notice he smells <laughs> kind of funny. What do you do? Oh. Do you whisper? <laughs> Justin, do you whisper? <laughs> you smell funny! <laughs> or do you say? Nice to meet you, Freddy! <laughs> well, I don't want... I, I, I don't want Freddy to go through life not facing any challenges. And I also don't want him to expose his smelliness to other people and not be aware that he smells. So if we work with Freddie on a little bit of personal hygiene, maybe some lube from time to time, I think this could all work out. I think you have to tell him that he's he's got a, a funky, so you, yeah, funky you, you say You're saying you're a fan of self-improvement, and the first step yes. is diagnosis. You're thying that this is a guy who needs, uh, you're, you're embettering his life. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, so you yeah. say, uh, you, you smell funny. <clears throat> Chapter 7. You whisper, you smell funny. You lean over your desk and whisper. You smell funny. Justin. I said, said you it. smell funny. Oh, okay, sorry, we had, we had an internet hiccup there, so I don't know if I got lost there. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Freddie looks at you and frowns. That wasn't very nice, <laughs> but it's true. You say, and I don't like your freckles. <laughs> <laughs> Tears well up in Freddy's eyes. He turns Aww. his face away from you. At this point, I'd like to pause and talk real quick to Scott Sigler. Uh, hey, man, have you ever said something hurtful <laughs> to someone without meaning it? <laughs> I feel like we should have some The More You Know music playing in the background for this part of the set. <laughs> Uh, what was the question again? Uh, have you ever uh, said, you ever uh, said uh, something, something hurtful, hurtful to someone meaning, without meaning it, meaning dickhead? It. Uh, that's a belt, right? Am I wrong? Is that a belt? No. Hey, Why? Please. What are you talking no, about? 
Dude, learn the, them's the rules. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't know the rules, but now I can use dickhead, which is very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. I have said hurtful things to people, and sometimes it's, I meant it. Sometimes I did not mean it. But at all times, I have felt much shame and chagrin, and gone back and tried to mend my ways. All times. Has, has anyone done the same to you? Like, like you did it to them, and then they did the same to you. So, have I ever done it to someone, and then they did it to yeah. me back again? Yeah, kind of yeah, a yeah. Circle but the same, but they the same doing. way. The same. Like, like you just, you just did it, and then they're like, "Well, now I'm gonna do you," and then they, they did it back to you. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's happened a couple of times. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it is San Francisco. <laughs> sure. There's, there's a lot okay. of uh, um, mutual respect, shall we say, going on. How, now, I'm serious. How, how did it feel? Well, <laughs> it felt it felt nice to have that kind of connection, that sure. sharing, that everybody yeah. was open and vulnerable, and spread <laughs> their selves out, yeah. so to speak. Thin so at times. Spread themselves a little bit of thin at times. Maybe a shower of love, if you will. Yeah. You know that open, <laughs> that blessed nature. You could almost of bathe in it. You could. You could almost. You could almost bathe in it, and it becomes a part of you. Is the thing. Sure. It really once it enters you, it becomes a part of you, and it's all one big happy family. So I think it felt pretty right good. On. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's get back to the story. Um, time moves slowly. Sloppy writing. <laughs> but finally. <laughs> It is lunchtime. Mrs. Molly comes up to your desk. I've decided that you will be Freddy's buddy for the week. Can you please take Freddy to the cafeteria? I guess All right. I will Do you take Freddy click to the, on the cafeteria. Yeah, there you go. That sounds smart to me. Yep. Chap chapter eight. Go to the cafeteria. When you reach the cafeteria, there is already a long line. Today, they are serving pizza and salad. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Yum. The leaders of the cool kids at school, Sandra and Ken, come up to you and Freddy. Hey, who's the new kid? Sandra asks. This is Freddy. <laughs> you say. Freddy looks away. Well, we've decided you can join our table today. But Freddy is not allowed! Ken says. What do you do, Scott Sigler? Do you stay with Freddy instead of going to the cool kids' table? Or leave Freddy and go to the cool kids' table? I'm going to have to opt out to the chat realm on this one. I want to get some feedback real quick. Chat realm, let's look really quick. Take five seconds. Cool kids or stay with Smelly Freddy? I think it should also be pointed out, and you make a very, very good point, that it has not been resolved yet in the story, uh, so we can only assume that Freddy still smells like poop. And Donkey Fist oh, is yeah. not an answer. Donkey yeah. Fister is not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> cool kids, stay. Fire trucks, chicks, cool kids, stay. Uh, wow, it's about a 50-50 split. I'm going to say... <laughs> let's Stay let's... with Fred, take his food. <laughs> Blow up the school, says Twit Raccoon. You know, for some reason, I thought there'd be a little bit more empathy out of the chat room. I don't know what I was thinking. Fart is also Booty. not an answer. Fart is not an answer. We'll stay with Freddy. We're going to stay with Freddy. All right. Maybe, uh, well, if you farted, then you wouldn't smell Freddy. So, uh, all right, you leave Freddy. Oh, wait. Nope. Sorry. I, I Apparently, I made. Oh, here we go. Yeah, stay with Freddy. <clears throat> That's what you wanted, right? Uh, yeah, stay with Freddy. Chapter, chap, chapter four. <laughs> stay with Freddy. <laughs> you say, I'll stay with Freddy. I'm his buddy for the week. <laughs> Ken frowns at you and crosses his arms. Sandra crosses her arms too. Suddenly, they look very, very tall. Then, thump. Ken's hands push into your chest <laughs> and you stumble backwards. <laughs> thump. He pushes you again and again. Stop! You cry, but your voice isn't very loud. And Ken looks like he can't hear anybody right now. <laughs> Freddy is frozen. His mouth in an O. He, he runs to the nearest supervising teacher. 
<laughs> Mr. Edwards runs up to Ken, Sandra, and you. He <laughs> puts himself between you and Ken. Ken stops trying to push you, but his face is red, and he glares at you. Now, what happened here? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Edwards, Edwards asks. Mr. Edwards came from Okinawa. He's a good cat. <laughs> I'm still stuck on Freddy showing everyone his O-face. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Since there's no actual choice in this choose your own adventure sometimes story, I'm going to go ahead and click on the link, whatever the hell it was. Oh, FL is okay. to the chat room. Just legit. What is Ken's problem? <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of a dick, to be fair. He's got some real problems. He's got some rage issues. Yeah. His face is red. Oh, my God. All right. <clears throat> Chapter. Chapter one, tell Mr. Edwards what happened. <laughs> you tell Mr. Edwards that Ken pushed you because you decided to stay with Freddy instead of joining the cool kids table. Freddy confirms your story and Sandra nods her head agreement. Ken stays silent. Whew. It looks like Ken will be having detention after school today. <laughs> Mr. Edwards says, Hi! Ken and I are going to have a chat for a bit. He pulls Ken aside and they talk in the hallway. <laughs> are you okay? Freddy asks you. <laughs> you rub your chest. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I think so. You both get your food and sit down to eat. When you're working on your salad... Your toss salad. <laughs> Mr. Edwards returns with Ken. Ken has something to say to you. Mr. Edwards says, Ken's eyes are not... Er, <clears throat> Ken's eyes are looking at the floor, but finally he looks up at you. I'm sorry for pushing you and for not including Freddy. I, uh, I don't think that reads the same way that it was written. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you say, I, I, give, it to the, give that to me again, but this time I say, I'm sorry for pushing you and for not including Freddy. Okay, here we go. Second read. I'm sorry for pushing you and not including Freddy. <laughs> Mr. Edwards pats Ken on the back. He asks you. <laughs> so, then, do you uh, forgive Ken? What do you do? Do you I... forgive Ken? <laughs> or do you refuse to give forgive Ken? I'm a big fan of Mr. Edwards, by the way. Mr. Edwards may be my new favorite character <laughs> on the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I gotta Edward, say, I that, still don't know what Ken's problem is, and I hope he dies, and I hope he burns in hell. So I am not forgiving Ken. <laughs> Burn in hell, Ken. <laughs> Burn in hell. Ch chapter three. Refuse to forgive Ken. No, Ken. I don't forgive you. What you did to me Friday was mean, and I don't want to forgive you. You say you cross your arms. Ken sniffs and looks at the ground. Scott, I feel like now's a good time for me to ask you, like, is there ever a time when someone didn't forgive you and after you, even after you said you're sorry? Like, how did that make you feel? Well, it did not make me feel good, Brian. It made me feel real bad. I knew I had done wrong, and, uh, you know, oddly, it was also a salad-related incident, you know, which is <laughs> coincidental with this story, completely coincidental, and I was, I was not forgiven for my behavior, so uh, it did not make me feel good at all, no. Uh, you know what, uh, what, what, what should we have done instead of refusing to forgive Ken? I, I think you, uh, you, for, you forgive and you forget, hopefully forget, with a, a, a lot of booze and mm. some Ambien and as much of that as you can do. And you just try and forget these things and move on and, for, you know, forgive and forget, I think. Let's try that again. End game and leave comments. Uh, Brian. I feel like that was an amazing uh, adventure. Yeah. Uh, everybody here in the chat room, let's go ahead and get some digital applause. 
for Scott Sigler and shepherding this Scott story Sigler, along. He did. He he, uh, he really took us on the hero's journey, man. It's, yes. uh, we learned a little bit about ourselves. We grew. We uh, we played with. We 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 ate some salad. We uh we we got pushed an awful lot. We got yes. up between a, there was some a, a chest, guy, there was girl, some chest and, and, and their banana. Uh, uh, an old face. Uh, people in the chat room. Yeah. You want to know what? And, and and this is actually. Uh, I'm not sure the people in the chat room were actually following the same story based on some of the suggestions that they were kicking out. But no. they they had their own story of some funny kind. thing. And actually, this just came up yeah. on my iPad. Um, Mr. Edwards was just found dead in his home. <laughs> no. <laughs> The uh, police are speculating uh, seppuku. So, <laughs> well, uh, well, oh, so, so well, if he killed himself, I'm I'm almost certain if he killed himself, he would have left like a videotape. In fact, I I would bet a lot of money that there was like a recording on his computer of of his last words explaining why he was leaving <laughs> this this world. What 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 did, what did that sound like? Uh, I I think it sounded like this. Uh, if I could only give you. One last bit of advice. Squarespace is the best way to make a website. When you say <clears> Squarespace, <throat> yeah, what, what are we talking about? Squarespace, as uh, the authorities understand, is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. <laughs> uh, dude, that's great. <laughs> what did I just miss? I, I just looked over and I see you just <laughs> trying to catch your breath. Before going forward, I, you start the ad read, and I'm like, I'm like, finally, I can center, I can get back in, back in shape, and then I, then you toss to me, and I'm like, ah, son of a, uh, listen, man, I don't know about you, but I love, I love blogs, I love portfolios, and I love <laughs> websites of all varieties. I, I wanna, I wish, I wish I could be one, or at the very least, make one, but I don't know anything about HTML or or website design let me ask you this so what, what guess, are your least favorite things about websites whenever you're making your own website well uh, what's your least favorite thing the fact that they're not just in my view at all times it seems mm. like the, if that there was ugly? a way to be seeing them are they ugly i mean the ones i make here's what happens okay you so make it's like you make ugly every, things right well i don't intend okay so it's like i'm like tonight's the night i'm gonna make a website and yeah. i sit down i start printing uh, or yourself a nice like, little uh, glass of scotch. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, a yeah, silk exactly. rope. Yeah, what? you're uh, like, I'm gonna make a website tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I put, make I, you I put up on website. some. some I put a, put tonight, on some counting crows. I'm gonna and, uh, make a web. I'm gonna, I'm gonna code you up, baby. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> I'm gonna open up. Let me show you my HTML, baby. Hello world, I need but to they, visit with you. Horizontal rule. I need your CSS in my H-E-R-A-T. Let me make those words strong, baby. Didn't spell heart right. But the problem is, see, you guys are just mocking me because the, 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 the evening always ends with me in tears and my website ruined and I just feel like I'm, I'm, I'm valueless and hideous and no one's ever gonna love me and I can't be made into a beautiful butterfly. Tonight, <laughs> Brian, beautiful designs. You need to look at Squarespace, baby. Tonight, <laughs> we're gonna be easy to you. I'm gonna show you how beautiful you are, baby. Tonight, we're gonna be inexpensive for you. You're pretty and I don't say that to all the websites, Brian. <laughs> Tonight, <laughs> the hosting is included. What? Hold on. Not only are you going to make me something beautiful, you're going to host it for me? Yes, Brian. Tonight, Squarespace takes care of all the hosting so you don't have to. Uh, dude, uh, great, because I hate hosts and everyone who's hosting. I want other people to host, dude, not me. they're straight garbage. How about this one? Mobile Ready, the new Squarespace metric app. For iPhone or iPad, allows you to check site stats like page views, unique visitors, and social media follows. With the blog app, you can make text updates, tap and drag images to change layouts, and monitor comments on the go. Brian, we're all busy people. We're going. We're not staying. Dude, and the problem is I'm so busy. I ain't got time to tap that image. But if I can tap that image and then go, then great. Brian, even better. Tonight, you can tap and drag that image. Drag it right down, baby. <laughs> Tonight, start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Start building your website. It ain't free, baby, <laughs> but ain't no credit card required. <laughs> when you 
Decide to sign up for Squarespace Chimes. It's where these where the chimes are gonna go. Make sure you use the offer code NSFW1. Get 10% off. Show your support for the show. We thank Squarespace for their support of NSW Show. We need Squarespace tonight. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Squarespace is an exceptional website maker. Brian, the last time, uh, one of the last times that Scott was on here, uh, we had <laughs> a, uh, a a really fun thing that wound up becoming a part of of Scott's literary uh, career. Yes, we, we came up with a story. Yes, and Scott well, wrote okay. it. Yeah. Yes, it, you put it that way. I would say we we crapped gold out of our mouths, and he <laughs> banked on it. So you're welcome, Scott. Well, that's okay. That's true. Yeah. There was mouth crappy gold falling pieces. <laughs> but what we have now is we're gonna gather those pieces up in a stack and shove them right back in again. Yeah, in a way. Only for us to choke on it. Yep. And cough it up <laughs> again, so we can then sell it. Magic! Yeah. I made my own food. Yes, it's gonna be great. <laughs> So what we've done, what we have done here. Hold on, yes. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you just say magic, I'm in my own food? <laughs> is, that, is that what I just heard? I, I said magic, I made my own food. Yeah. Which is uh, uh, I mean, hyper duh, and Brian. half punchline, but yeah. in my own food, that doesn't make any sense. Unless there's jelly involved, <laughs> then it makes a lot of <clears> sense. <throat> but that's besides the point. <laughs> Maybe a nice creme brulee. Creme, creme brulee, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. So, uh, hey, quit, quit you can tell other. them, you can tell the viewing audience what they get today. Here's the deal. Uh, since we came up with this story, a lot has happened. It was in, uh, what, was, what was the final? The Beam bone, Up on Aisle 5. Beam right? Up Bones on Aisle 5, yes. Uh, it was on or in Scott's uh, short story compilation, Bones Are White. Uh, I was brought in to read the story, it is in the audio book for Bones Are White. That's right. And uh, I think people have been clamoring for more of these characters. Yes, for big, for Brock Stockman, Big Ugly, and uh, the rabbi. Yeah. And oh my gosh, we're, wait, wait, we're bringing back the, the exact same, we're telling their sequel? Is this what's going on? That's right, Brian, that's yes. right. We are bringing them back, we're bringing back that old New Hoboken rap, and uh, we are doing another <laughs> Uh, Brock Sockman and Big Ugly. Yep. Uh, story. And well, you know, I, I thought it was uh, Rabbi Joseph or uh, Manischewitz. It's, it's oh, Rabbi, Rabbi uh, yeah, Rabbi Manischewitz Rabbi and Brock Sockman, right? Yep. Rabbi Manischewitz. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, just so everybody who is not caught this before, yeah, we're gonna give away the short story collection Bones Are White over at ScottSigler.com with the coupon code NSFW, so they can go to ScottSigler.com. Uh, slash shop, or they can go to the main page, pull down the library menu. They can find Bones Are White, which is an ebook, and they can add that to their cart, put it right in that cart. And when they check out, boom, put in the code NSFW, just Bones Are White ebook. It's free. You're free. Yep. You're boom. absolutely that's free. What? Right there. Yep. That's it. What? Yep. I'm not lying. Dude, freaking amazing. Yep. $4.99. Eat that. Eat yep. that white bone. That's, we're not paying that. We're going to get it for free with so you can all, SFW. You, you can all take my white bone, yeah. and, we, and you may <laughs> ingest the white bone and make it a part of you so that yeah. you might not know exactly what everybody's talking about tonight, but we're going to make up a story. Yeah, just uh, take, take Scott's white bone, put it take inside it. you, take and all of experience it. Put it the in joy. Your cart. Yeah. yeah, put it right. Put it in your cart. You might want to back your car up to get it because it's a big bone. <laughs> but Back I mean, it up. That's what you Take say. the white bone. <laughs> hey, be real. I don't have to have any evidence on this. <laughs> I can I make stuff up for a living. Yes, yes the bone is huge. Oh, it's a gigantic. It's gigantic. Sure. Uh, well, here uh, we're gonna we're gonna do, we're gonna write a sequel. Yes. So just to catch everybody up, the last time that we uh, visited with Rabbi Manischewitz and Brock Sockman, the Big Ugly, they are two. Uh, would you say low rent criminals? Yeah, they're two low rent criminals. They're enforcers. They're both uh, MMA. Yeah. Uh, on New Hoboken, Space Station New Hoboken. And uh, Brock Sockman's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh -huh. And the rabbi largely is just trying to keep him out of trouble by taking contracts with shifty people who will pay them money, sometimes to rough people up, sometimes just to get information. And the last time so they went the on a, a, a big uh, murder mystery throughout mm -hmm. the underworld of New Hoboken, including some of the characters uh, that we went through in our uh, previous uh, story at that point. Yeah. So now, all right, I got this one. 
I got this one. Okay, Here's Brian, go ahead. Is is a, a ghost from Ro, uh, Rabbi Manischewitz's past come back? Uh, and he's not he's not an actual rabbi, right? They just call him. No, the that's rabbi? like his nickname because he his is. Uh, he's was Jewish. it Joseph Manischewitz? No, he's Joseph he's Jewish. Yeah. No, 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 no. But he's not a rabbi. No, he's that's his yeah, yeah, that's his nickname. nickname. Yeah, because he's Jewish. Now yeah. entering, weighing one hundred forty five pounds with a record of five wins and seventeen losses, the rabbi like that kind of. There rabbi. we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so the, the rabbi has a ghost from his past surface, uh, which I guess is how every single one of these stories goes. But yep. in this case, he owes a very big debt that he needs to pay off. And the Ooh. only way to do it is to assemble a team of six curious characters to perform a heist to get a data card <sighs> that has some blackmail. Okay, all right, so here we go. Okay, so so now we've got some open slots, obviously. Uh, Brock Sockman is on the team. Got, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't go anywhere without Brock Sockman. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. now we have four more spots. Let's assemble the team, and then we'll figure out what uh, what, what they are stealing. Uh, I feel like <laughs> Mr. Edwards needs to be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, Mr. Edwards is... Didn't he die? Uh, is, uh, I thought, I thought he was in dead. real life. Oh, okay. You make up things, <laughs> like your big bone. So this is a... <laughs> if that... <laughs> if that <laughs> So it's a heist uh, and or caper. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's loose. I, we're, we're just talking about the bones. Uh, we're just laying some white <laughs> bones in Apex in the chat room suggests Skeeve Gibson, the hacker. <laughs> <laughs> Skeevy Gibson. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Skeevy Gibson is the hacker. Uh, Mr. Edwards is a, um, is a, uh, a teacher by day, but a martial artist by night. Oh, that's racist. He's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's racist. That's what you're gonna go with. That part is racist. Just say, uh, just say where the boundaries I are. Like that's to keep our our racial sensitivities in line. Just establishing boundaries. <laughs> that's that's all fine. Yes. Teacher by day, the <laughs> martial artist by night. Right. <laughs> Funny. This is put a bit in this. So uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Main, friend of the show, had a TV show debut. I was talking with Ashley, my girlfriend, about that, and she's like, you know, if you were ever on television, you would really need to calm down. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, some of the stuff you do on an SFW show is not cool to people outside of a podcast audience. And I'm like, oh, what? What? Come on, what? She's like, the voices. And I'm like, what voices? Smash they cut to me. People love the food. Smash voices. cut to me. Hey, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Edwards. Ah. By the way, I really liked your protagonist's voice. At first, I thought it was a bit much, but then as it went on, I became more excited that he had exactly one intensity, one yes. volume, and one emotion. I like to call it time. third guy in the posse in any movie starring a rapper. That's my, that's that voice. Yes. What do you mean, dog? Right. Well, uh, so, okay, somebody so we asked. Got, we we got, got four have, of them already. Somebody asked if we could have Andrew Main, the magician, in the story, but there already is a magician in the story. There's yeah. a, 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 a mysterious magician who has spiky blonde hair, and you know things poof up and he disappears and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he was he was another underworld. He was killed in yes. the first one. So he died. Is he part of the team. Oh, oh, he's part of the team. That's a that's a, that's no, a demanding no. that's I, a I demand feel, to make. He could be the foil. Nope, nope. I feel I feel like he should uh, be pestering them to join the team the entire time. But Rabbi just doesn't have the time for this guy. He's like, "Come on, I go poof. I, I'm, 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 the, I'm the magic guy." And also, and then he's like, "Look, man, your your hair's gone limp. You're no good to us anymore because he's like old now." So he's had a bad, shocking experience, perhaps at lunch, perhaps when he didn't join yes. the cool kids, and it sh it changed him. He's a changed man. All right, what about yeah. um? a once respected member of the New Hoboken community who has recently been exiled and now lives uh, a, 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 a piecemeal existence just outside of New Hoboken. On, uh, on his own asteroid, like he's just like that. Like they go to visit Flom him. Flom Garrett. Flom? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Well, well, the guy's named Flom, F-L-A-M, mm -hmm. uh, and and Flom Garrett uh, lives in his own little asteroid. And when they go to visit him, they talk about how, like, oh man, this guy, he, he used to run this joint. Yeah. But then they get there, and and what's sad is it becomes apparent that they think that he still thinks he's a king, but just of a different castle. Indeed. And so he's like, 
He's he's talking to to like his pots and pans all around him, and he he delivers. He keeps, he keeps calling and, like he keeps referring like that. There is going to be this groundswell of of support with the Garrett militia. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, and he he's like they're waiting for me, boys. And, uh, it, it, but they bring him in because he's crazy, but he's canny like a fox. Yeah. But needs to be kind of controlled. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, the Garrett Garrison is what he calls the his Garrett people. Garrison. He's, yeah. He's, he's like, the, the Garrett Garrison, they're, they're there. All they're right. all around you. So we need, do we need two more? Well, we've got Ski, no, Skeevy uh, Gibson, no, the hacker. Skeevy Five. Gibson, sorry. We've got Mr. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, uh, teacher by day, martial artist by night. And I'm going to have uh, to write that, which is awesome. Then we have Flam Garrett. <laughs> so, and, and so that's 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 five, including our uh, the rabbi and and yes. and. Uh, okay, so so then here's the last one. You ready? Yes. The last one is that they're all like they try to get one guy, and they, they keep they keep they, but they can't get him. Or maybe maybe this is where they go for the the floppy headed magician. Like he can't do it. He's no, like, I'm no, sorry, no, guys. We need a we need a girl. We do need a girl and or a vaguely no, gay character. I, I've, got, I've got it. Okay. I've got it. Okay. They're like, they're like, there's this scene where finally everyone's like, you know, you got to, you got to do it. He's like, I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. And then finally they go and they, they, they knock on the door, door opens. You don't see the, pro, the, the character. You just hear her very characteristic voice say, <laughs> Justin. Oh, oh, hey, Mister! <laughs> <laughs> and then they like they they have to get Carney Cow. Carney Cow. Carney Cow. Carney Cow would be yeah. That's uh, Carney Cow was going to be in it one way or another. Exactly. I can tell you that no, right yeah. there because her her romance hey, with Brock Sockman. I That's... heard your uh, Mister Edwards son. I'd like to <laughs> son my Edwards on him. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, Carney Cow. You uh, don't uh, make any sense. Who who is the lady with the bartender? <laughs> uh, darn it, I forgot. Yeah, I'll have to, a will probably come back with that. <laughs> uh, meth, See, meth Justin? cow. Yeah, meth meth cow is is carny cow, right? Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, Brian? Uh, well, I was just gonna say like like uh, Scott couldn't remember and he wrote it and I'm yeah. like, see, I, it's not just me. Scott forgets everything too. <laughs> oh, I'm we sorry, Brian. I, I didn't remember. pick up on the reference you made to a private conversation we had 45 minutes before the show. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> now everyone knows we talked. We talked, <laughs> and everyone knows it. I'm Let not it go, I, Brian. I, I, another one from the chat room. I'm not putting in huge G erection. I'm not huge erection. Oh, come great, on. Right? We have no. some decorum and cleverness to these things, no. like meth cow yeah. and, also, and Japanese <laughs> Mr. Edwards. Also, rape snake is not going in there either. Rape snake, no. Snake. no. Rape snake. That's snake. so gimmick. Rape snake is not going in my story. No, no, rape, okay. Rape snake, this is... rape snake was a weird things character. Okay. Yeah, uh, come on, man. Let's keep our universes separate. Exactly. We, we, we can keep this consistent right and do this right. Snake. So this is our team. Ski, uh, ski, 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 By the way, there was a suggestion that Skeevy Gibson's nickname is Skeet. So it's Skeet, <laughs> Skeevy Gibson. Skeevy, Skeevy, Skeet Gibson. Is Skeevy <laughs> Gibson is someone this? from the show or? Uh, Steve Gibson is the uh, host of... Uh, security security now. now here on the Twitter oh, network. Oh, okay. He is a an extremely knowledgeable professional, which is why it's hilarious that we defame him in this ridiculous story. Okay. <laughs> so, give Skeevy Gibson. You got to. Every team has to have a hacker because that's yeah. how Hollywood works right now. There's always a hacker who can do magically anything. <laughs> uh, a Adam asks, "What about the rescue snake?" <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, man. All right. So, 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 what's the so? So they assemble the team. And, and what is it they have to get? What's the MacGuffin? Yes, what is the MacGuffin? So I like the idea that they need to, I mean, I don't know, should it just be money? Like they need to- I think it should be someone called MacGuffin. I think there should be an actual character named <laughs> John they MacGuffin. They, 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 yeah, there you go, they, they, they need to ki kidnap uh, uh, Mar Marcel MacGuffin? Marcel well, MacGuffin. I don't know why every- Well, he's the famous mime from Jupiter. So yeah, I think yeah, for sure. Marcel, Marcel MacGuffin. <laughs> Marcel. Except, however, as culture has evolved, uh, miming is uh, now 
yelling at the top of your lungs what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so you just say, I'm typing on a typewriter. <laughs> now I'm washing a window. <laughs> That's the Jupiter school of mimery. <laughs> okay. He's from the Jupiter school of mimery. <laughs> I'm Marcel what, McGuffin, Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Why do they need Marcel McGuffin? That's a good question, Brian. I've been asking myself that. <laughs> uh, it was, Brian, of course, as you know, uh, Marcel McGuffin uh, had was the lover of uh, the president of New Hoboken, and it is dead. only okay. so if they have him alive, can they blackmail the president to get what they want? Is Chad Tilton behind this? Uh, Chad Tilton is now the president. Oh, geez, OP. <laughs> of New yeah, Hoboken. Uh, uh, okay, now here, here's the other thing as well Ew, is is Chad there is <laughs> there is a, a a lot to deal with uh, because uh, you can't just go up and steal Marcel McGuffin, right? He's he's very well protected. Well, who who uh, has because, Marcel McGuffin now? That's the question. Well, no, no, it's like he's touring with his two tour managers. He's got he's got big highfalutin uh, Saturnian. Representation, Simon and Nigel are the ones who ah, you know are looking out yes. for him. Uh, from uh, New Britannia, or no, they're actually New just Britannia. from London. Like they just came from there. Like they actually, they're just from London. It's from reg from uh, regular the, London, the actual classic London back yeah. on Earth. Sure. From old London, sure. They're from old London town. Uh, so yeah, so Simon and Nigel uh, are are the the masterminds behind Marcel McGuffin. Uh, they are trying to keep him safe and they are our our antagonists they we have to the team has to thwart everything that they've set up around Marcel so they can kidnap Marcel and use him as blackmail against now president Chad Latilton so they have to then, penetrate the impenetrable fortress yeah <laughs> then get the MacGuffin who's named MacGuffin yeah and then <laughs> I'm being kidnapped <laughs> No, I'm not miming. I'm actually being <laughs> effing kidnapped. What's wrong with you people? This isn't an act. Then they use... It's his greatest work. Oh, it's, fab it's fabulous. I can't get over the talent. It's shocking to me. Shocking. Then they use the MacGuffin to blackmail uh, Chad LaTilton. Yes. Do I have this yeah. all right? Yep. Also, Marcel MacGuffin is a black male. <laughs> well, that's fine. Why, why, why would that be funny? Because I mean, we're gonna use odd. the blackmail for blackmail, Brian. Yeah. Oh my God! I didn't get that because I'm He's dumb. An African Not very American bright. gentleman. It's pretty good. That's cool. All right. <laughs> what do they want Latilton right. to do? Why are they Why are they blackmailing Latilton? What is the? Well, okay. I I feel like I feel like this is where. Uh, well, I mean, they maybe maybe we don't say what that is. But these guys are going along with it. But I feel like none of them like this heist. They don't like this caper. They don't want to be working for this I, guy. I got it. Here, here's, here's what it is. So Chad Latilton, now in the position of president, is uh, consolidated power and is now wiping out all of the other underworld activities. And so now they need the one thing. Oh, he's actually cracking down. He's they actually need to down. fight to keep the, the And so now the, they need the, the one thing market. that keeps their businesses open, which is why all of these disparate underworld forces have come together <laughs> to... Right. Uh, so if we're doing that, that gives us a cool opportunity to have the Dick Tracy slash Batman roundtable gallery of thugs. Yeah. So if there are oh, any other yeah. really over-the-top characters that you want to get in, you know, like Little Face... Or whoever the Joker killed for absolutely no reason yeah. in the, the Batman movie. We can do that. So, uh, you right, know, so we, uh, need, we need yeah. other ridiculous side characters. Totally ridiculous gang gang leaders. Uh, Creepy Santa. Postini, Cre Creepy of Santa, course. Yeah. Postini. Uh, the, yeah, no, the, the old world, uh, you know, he really, the, the Horse godfather. Horse boy. Yeah. Horse boy. Uh, uh, Postini. <laughs> when I was a younger man. I used to say, I used to bounce Chad Latilton on my knee. I said, oh, you're such a good boy, Chad Latilton. Now he's all grown up, a big piece of crap. <laughs> uh, Max Trollbot is, is renowned for, uh, for, for his uh, acerbic <laughs> wit. He's an unlikable bloke, that one. Uh, of course, uh, and Brad maybe, Pitt. maybe Brian, Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Uh, the magician. Uh, the magician. The, the magician's going to be in this. No, no, I can't he's, say no, where. He's at, he's at the table, right? But he is bothered by somebody else at the table. 
uh, Brian, maybe we can reenact this famous scene uh, from the book. You are the magician when all of a sudden you hear somebody walks into the room and you're dismayed to hear, Ahoy, Brian. <laughs> Oh, damn it, Captain Morgan! It's a, I, why are you even here? You weren't invited. This is the rogues' I, gallery. I, I am an invitation. I invite but the you, party, Brian. But you didn't. Maybe you're not invited here. No. Why do you, what makes you think? That's my favorite song. Wait, wait, wait. No. Is that a song? Says the captain. Wait, wait, did, so, so there's three words. No says the captain. No what, says what comes the next? captain. Doodly 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 do. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. Pull, where did you Where did you pick up this song, Captain? I used to sing it when I was uh, on my boat. I would listen to the winds, Brian. So okay, so you would listen with the wind saying you this yeah, song. The you were, wind you were... would say. No, said the captain, but it usually, I, I figured it out after a while, Brian. It was in the wind. It was someone it I murdered. I pushed them over the boat, and they were saying no. <laughs> and then I would just say afterwards, said the captain. <laughs> then you would go doodly 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 Because what? after a while, it got annoying, Brian, them saying no. <laughs> What, wait, what, what do you mean? You, you they were dying, so you Brian. It's, it's really <laughs> inconsiderate. So, so you, so you stopped because they were. It was rude. To no, be killing I them. just said doodly doodly do louder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Captain right, Morgan you know says doodly doodly. So Captain doodly Morgan, of course. There we go. Ca Captain Morgan, who I guarantee will be dead five minutes into the book <laughs> by page three, just gone. That doodly doodly die, mother person. <laughs> Check swing. Check swing. Line? Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is quite now. Um, is there any other uh, tawdry information that we should get into this story? I feel the chat room is, <sighs> is working hard to try and, you know, do <laughs> yeah, this no, off. Like, this Rick. is a serious piece of fiction right now, and the chat room is trying to turn it into something that's just not serious. I don't really yeah. understand what's happening. Uh but, but 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 Fat Rick is one of the 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 rogues gallery. Uh, there, the, Fat Rick is uh, Fat. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Fat oh, Reggie Rick? L. Stein. It's it's. I can picture him at the table right now. I'm like, do any of you have any ideas for how we should run this adventure? Anyone at all? Oh, <laughs> uh, sweet Fat Rick. <laughs> no. Wait. <laughs> I I don't want to hear from hey, Fat Rick. I don't want to hear from you. I'm I, sorry, bro. I, I thought it. I thought you had said, Fat Rick, did you talk to us? I'm sorry. I'll just go back to I want to hear, I wanna hear what Reggie. I want to hear what Reggie L. Stein <laughs> I'm, thinks. I'm Reggie L. Stein. <laughs> I live in London. Rigel Stein. I normally spend my evenings bathing in my hot tub, smoking poorly rolled blunts, and sitting upon a fine pot. Instead, I'm here with you. This rogues gallery deciding how to solve this mystery. I would say what, what? this. If this were one of my novels, I would solve it by saying that there is only one man who can get us to the end. It is Reggie. Reggie is a <laughs> the good friend of mine. The writer. Oh, Re Reggie is a friend of you, but, but but your name's Rigel Stein, and this character's named Reggie. That seems really weird. That is real similar. Is, are, you, are you writing yourself in, into the books? Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's this guy? Because I like this guy. I'm rolling with this guy. This guy's great. I'm Rajal Stein. Rajal. I'm Indian. <laughs> Not even close, but all right. Sure. By heritage, you see. Oh, yeah. By heritage Indian. Colonial Indian. <laughs> Now, uh, now he, we're doing he, uh, bad was... characterizations of a racist portrayal from Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. <laughs> it's just all coming completely full around. Rigel Stein is uh, uh, a writer. No, right, no, so so yeah, no, that's that's our our character, our R. Uh, L. Stein but, yeah, character. Oh, that's, that's our version. Of, okay. Have you met R. L. Stein? <laughs> Got it. I'm a great big fan of your work, Scott Sigler. It's good to talk to a fellow author. That's wonderful. We can Thank now you. have author chat. I'm sick of talking to Brian Brushwood. He's a fool. <laughs> I'm R.L. Stein. I live alone. <laughs> I just want to get out of the way. I want to actually watch 
Scott Sigler talk to our version of R.L. Scott, Stein. No. <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking. One day, I should, we should retire to my estate, Scott. I do live alone, so any time is good. <laughs> I gather that, I gather that you are. We can soak in my hot tub. <laughs> I have copious amounts of port, and if you do indulge, I am very crappy at rolling blunts, but I'd be happy to do. And then we could smoke it. My blunts are poorly rolled, but they are made with vim and vigor. And this, this is what you smoke before writing all of those children's books? I have, yes. Poorly crafted blunts. I write many books. <laughs> Are there any Goosebumps fans in the house? <laughs> I've written the Goosebumps series. I remember when I was writing the Goosebumps books about the slime that went to college. He was the older <laughs> brother in the end. Spoiler alert. No. Now, okay, now there's wait, a, there's wait, a few wait. Were these stories. poorly rolled blunts laced with LSD? Is that how you came up with all these amazing you know, little angel pe angel dust peppering well, the gumbo? I mean, that's, that's Scott, when so I great. roll what... my blunts, they are done so poorly, <laughs> I don't know what's in them. In fact, one time I found two roach legs and a copy of a Topps baseball card. I'm now, on a I think sign, is... I live alone. What's great about R.L. Stein is that he just uh, every single book has a backstory as of how it came came to be uh, known. Uh, for example, uh, the 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 three turtled shell. Uh, what, what, where, where where were you when you came up with that one, Brian? I'm glad you asked. In fact, it's a question I get quite often. The three turtled shell by R.L. Stein, a goosebumps novel by Diane. <laughs> the cheap pop. Why well, I was on the beach, and by beach I mean in my hot tub, which I call the beach. I was gazing upon the rippling waves when I said, "Doth I spy a turtle?" <laughs> it wasn't. It was but a blob of port that had dropped out of my glass and had appeared as if a turtle. By way of the oh. lens of the poorly rolled blunt for That's, which I was smoking. I gotta tell you, RL, I thought you were going somewhere else with the turtle concept in the tub. I totally thought you were going in a different direction, but port, a bubble of port, sure. That's okay. Indeed. Yes. I'm glad, listen, Ugh. it's good that we can converse as men of the word. Wordsmiths. Yes. Wordsmiths. Now, now, Pen now, monkeys, what about, if you what will. About, what about your most controversial book, yes. uh, The Nine Fangs of My Aunt? Brian, you know full well I've never spoken of the nine fangs of my aunt, the only unpublished Goosebumps novel. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why and, and, I remember are you gonna share as it if it were yesterday. <laughs> I brought the manuscript for the nine fangs of the ant for which I wrote in 12 feverish sweaty hours wow. in my hot tub. It which you call the beach. <laughs> which I, it was, the, it was not yet called the beach. I then called it the Itoll. <laughs> the, the what? The Itoll. Oh, the Itoll, the Itoll. Yes. No, okay. Brian, the Itoll. <laughs> the big the e thing that you drive under on the freeway <laughs> so you don't have to stop in the booth. <laughs> Got I it, mentioned got it. so right. I could go unfettered through my creativity <laughs> onto the Goosebumps fame. I wrote the nine okay, are... fangs of the ant. I brought it right. down to Scholastic. And now, you know now, there, what there, there is... rat Frinks had to say to me? What? I, I know what? publishing. What did they say? Your main character, a seven-year-old girl, cannot end the book as Adolf Hitler's mistress. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is you know the shackles they put on you creati creatively? It's just ridiculous. You've got to you know you've got to be your own ex express yourself. You've got to do your own thing. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> Finally, somebody understands RL's plight. So I looked them into the face and I spit in it and I said, "You'll be damned if you get another <laughs> word out of me, RL Stein." Now, Brian, here is that, the yes. As it turned out, I had not written a book 
called <laughs> the Nine Fangs of the Ant. I had not visited the scholastic offices, and I was indeed talking to an owl which had landed <laughs> on the edge of the atoll. Now, now, is it true that uh, that that you now, there are people who claim? That your controversial, you know, you didn't always do Goosebumps books for kids. Your controversial oh, adult yes, version. The Goosebumps series. <laughs> Can I get Anyone? a witness? <laughs> the, it, it, when you tried to write a book for for the uh, adults, um, tell us the it's tell us the real story behind the robot's shame. Brian, the robot's shame represented a sea change for me. Yes. And by sea change, I mean I can involve into my hot tub. <laughs> was it was it the beach? A sea change. Was it the beach at this point or no, not yet? No, it was not yet the beach. It was early in its construction. Mm -hmm. So I called it the Ivory Tower. The Ivory Tower, yes. Indeed. A good place for a writer to be, the, the Ivory, Ivory Tower. The Ivory Tower. Yes. I sat upon the Ivory Tower <laughs> and I said, who experiences the shame in modern society? Only to realize that it was not man, but rather man's greatest creation, <clears throat> the robot. I then and, fell and, asleep. <laughs> now, okay, now there are when some people that up, say that- It appeared as it, if I had written four words. It said, fart myself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I submitted it okay. to Scholastic, and they said, why not? <laughs> now, some people say that the entire thing is, is based on a true story, and when it says, when it's the robot shame, it's not actually about a monster robot. It's about uh, a party in 1978 where you were seen and recorded doing the robot uh, and, and became a viral bit. False, these rumors, no. Brian. Are you, are you saying you've and never done the robot? I will stand for them, I'm Aurel Stein! I live alone! <laughs> I was never caught on tape doing the robot. I was caught on tape <laughs> doing a belly roll in my hot tub. <laughs> and by caught on tape, I mean I was recording it on a webcam for which I was streaming to RedTube. <laughs> I called it okay. the Stein Roll and I made over $25. I didn't All right, know. Well. It was an idea for which uh, I had <sighs> smoking poorly rolled blunts and drinking port. In fact, <clears throat> I would say that you could find <clears throat> illustrations of this and so many other of my adventures at Shutterstock.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my now now Shutterstock RL this is amazing because I was always under the impression that that you had to take all your own photos if you wanted to include them in the covers of a Goosebumps book. Are you saying your Goosebumps didn't come you didn't take those photos you didn't paint those pictures? Indeed I did not, Brian. I'm RL Stein. I live alone. I have no help at all. I'm lonely. <laughs> Who wants to hang out with me? <laughs> well, you, Why do you I'm sure the say you're busy. <laughs> I asked you to I, hang out, and then you say no, and then I look on your Twitter, and you say I'm having a great time eating pizza <laughs> with her RL. Okay, that, well, well, I'm sure that's that, with her. I'm sure that the fine folks at Shutterstock <laughs> probably have a, a a stock photo that matches your feeling. Uh, I'll tell you what. Here, I'm gonna oh, go to Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock, RL's only true friend. Shutterstock.com well, gonna... has the perfect image or video for your next creative type, type, project. Type in loneliness or despair, Brian. Is it, what do we have there? Yeah, no, I'm going to write here unending sadness. And, uh, and let's see what Whether we got it's here. For your website, a publication, there, there... an advertisement, a video, I, I, or we, maybe another like... Goosebumps novel. Can we just try I Live Alone? I have to see what comes up under I Live Alone. I uh... First of all, can I say major high five to Shutterstock? Because I really did type in unending sadness, and this could be the cover of R.L. Stein's book about his unending sadness. Uh, I live alone. Let's take a look here. Oh my gosh, there's a lot, 
lots of people who live alone. Look at all these people. It's an They're, epidemic. Uh, it's an epidemic, Brian. There's a lot of people living alone. Not all of them have hot we tubs. We are a very proud community. Not all of them have hot tubs named either the beach or uh, Etoll <laughs> Etol or whatever the else. But Tower. There's Shut a lot of I'd like to, video clips I'd like from to point out the world and that puts them at your fingertips. Take it from old R.L. Like Stein. Many contributors to Shutterstock are professional filmmakers and animators. This is true. I've vetted it. There's 113 pages of I Live Alone I Live images. Alone. <laughs> There's 113 These pages are all of this. This is page for the one. Record. This, is not, uh, <laughs> this is not real. This, this is, this not, is how not what I people live. look like However, when they live alone. Like to make a, that one, hold on, wait a minute. No, go back up. <laughs> She's doing the finger cloud. This, look. yeah, no. This is my spirit animal. <laughs> I mean, this one right here. If you are to ask, where does R.L. Stein go in his happiest moments? It is it's image ID three one five. Eyes. It's it's image three one five five one one three nine. Thinking middle-aged woman. She looks. That is. Uh, that she looks is your spirit animal. And there's a certain chagrin to her face. Like, really? That's that's what we have. I've got three words for all of you. Stein hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Shutterstock has flexible pricing. You can choose between individual clips or video packs. Download <laughs> clips in HD, or save with standard definition on web formats. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. No credit card needed. Just start an account, begin using Shutterstock, and help imagine what your next project could be like. Save video selections you find to your clip box. Once you decide to purchase, use offer code NSFW114, and new accounts will receive 25% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. And for 25% off new accounts, use offer code NSFW114. We like to thank Shutterstock for their support of NSFW. Oh no, it's time for R.L. Stein to leave. I live alone. I'm R.L. Stein. I'm tired of doing the voice. <laughs> then let's talk another book outside of Goosebumps. <laughs> no, if no I can more. hijack this, this thing right yes, here. Yes, let's talk about pandemic. Yes, let's let's talk about the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> do I just begin or would you like, is there anything you gentlemen want well, to uh, here, here's, so, here's actually what I want to know. Uh, this is this is the third book in a series, right? Correct. Correct. And, so, and can you, do, when you have something like this, does your elevator pitch change? From when you just had the first book and you, and you got your you know your twenty second version of it and like 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 is it can you not say the later stuff that happens for fear of screwing stuff up or what can you tell what can you tell us without ruining things how about that well I can uh, I can tell you that what the series is about it's about um, it's kind of the classic invasion tale but broken down into three parts this is the final part the first part is called infected. And when you see any of the outbreak or invasion movies and there's the big map of the US with all those red dots growing and showing millions and millions of people dying, I was always like, who are, what about those little people in there? Yeah. What is their story? So Infected is the story of, of one person, uh, Perry Dossie, who is just one of the countless number of people dying. And this is the early stages of the outbreak, so nobody has any idea of what's going on. He doesn't know what's happening to his body. What is happening to his body is he has an organism in him that is hijacking his cellular reproductive process to make little bits of things that are going to collect into something really nasty that will make him do awful things. And it's a, it's a straight up horror story. It's kind of a tale of possession. Then with Contagious, we pull the camera back and see the national response to the whole thing. This is the classic outbreak movie that we've all seen a few different times. What's the president doing? What's the, the, the cabinet doing? How do we react to this? And that ends really poorly. So if anybody's read it, no spoilers in the chat room, but it's a pretty dramatic ending. It's not the typical, let's stop the bomb clock with 0 0.01 seconds left on it. Things go horribly wrong. Yeah. And then this is, this, this is, is a dark is, is second act. This is the first story. No, it's infected finishes. Yeah. And then the camera pulls back to the national response, which is the book contagious, which is book two. Yeah. And then we defeat the evil in that book. And then camera pulls all the way back to the worldview. So global cataclysm, all kinds, you know, the, the, bo the body count in this book is in, in the double digit millions, triple digit wow. millions. It gets way up there. Wow. Very scientifically based. I got a lot of great consultants who help make this as realistic as possible. But it, this isn't just a flu. This isn't a crazy flu. This is a, an intelligent disease that's actually capable of talking to its hosts, 
that can reprogram itself when you stop plan A, the disease reconfigures itself and does different things to the human body to make plan B. So I can't tell a whole lot about the whole series yeah. other than this This is the final book of the series. It does read fine on its own. We've got like 25 early Amazon reviews and a lot of those people have never read the first two books and they loved this book. So yeah. it can read it on its own, but in line with the other two books, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty sweet. I've been working on it for 20 years, so, basically. Th so did, did, was, that, was that a... a is it, like I would assume that it is a particular decision to say, let me tell stories that although do go in, in a successive order that can be read uh, by themselves because they are telling a different phase of the story, right. the local, the, med the medium, and then the worldview. Right, and that's, it, it, you, everybody's money is really valuable and his time is really valuable, so when you have a book come out, I wanna make sure that if you just read that one book, something strikes you about it, like the cover or a cover blurb, or oh, I know that guy and he likes that book, so I'll read it, that people can read that book unto itself and it's got a logical, satisfying conclusion. And if you don't wanna go back and read the rest, then you're fine. What I try and never do is, um, you know, let's take this giant ass book and split it up into thirds. Yeah. So if you wanna find out what's happening, you're almost held hostage to find out what happens in book two and book three. So they do stand alone. That's largely out of respect for the reader. No. So, and I guess the nice right. thing about doing that, <clears throat> even if you were to start, say, in the middle chapter, it's like, okay, you get it, this is an outbreak movie, and, and you're, you're watching what happens, uh, knowing that there's, it almost doesn't matter the personal, or, or it doesn't matter that you know where the first book ends, and I, I guess that's the case because you're, you're telling them to us right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, but oh, uh, people in the chat were asking, and I was wondering the same thing, are there audiobooks available for these? Yeah, uh, Infected and Contagious are on iTunes, uh, the Amazon store, they're on Audible, and the audiobook for this should be out right about the 21st when the book comes out. Um, so we put them out in all formats. This is from Crown, but we're actually publishing the audiobook ourselves, That's my right. company, Empty Set Entertainment. So uh, we have it in all, all formats. But the big format right now, you know, being um, kind of an up-and-coming author and trying to crack the New York Times bestseller list again, um, the trick to that oh! is hardcover sales are, yeah. are kind of the big thing. Sorry, you got a little, you know, dirt. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so you got a little dirt on your shoulder yeah. about the... Uh... But it's not an automatic with us. Like, no. there's there's some authors like, you know, Stephen King could fart and put it in covers on it and sell it and boom, number one New York Times bestseller. Stephen King could <laughs> I'm go I'm right to here. <laughs> <laughs> I live alone and sometimes I throw poo on a page and sell it and it hits number one. That's what I do. I'm R.L. Stein. <laughs> Uh, but so we really try and drive as many sales to the hardcover sales as we can All and right. try and drive pre-order. So yeah. let's let's talk about where people can do that. Yeah. Uh, ScottSigler.com slash pandemic. Yes. Uh, as well as Amazon. That Amazon is a very good place, uh, especially because people who buy books go there. Mm -hmm. If you buy it there and review it there, that matters for other future That matters sales, right? because uh, pre-orders of a book matter because they roll up. What yeah. the New York Times is looking at is sales by week. And if you got some kind see, of oh, see, and, <clears throat> what's that, Brian? And I guess I guess you what well, you have you have a bunch of insights that we don't have because we sort of stumble around and tell everyone to buy at the exact same hour. But it sounds like I always assumed that having pre-orders spread out over time was not as good as having everybody buy it the exact same day. But you're telling me, uh, as far as Amazon at least, that that's not the case. Well, with Amazon, everything that is bought before January 21st, which is, is the day of one. release. Jan week one starts January 21st. Everything pre-ordered before January 1st probably gets shipped right about then and sales roll up to that first week. So, uh, you know, for a mid-list author, the really big week is that first week. And if you can make that first week pop, <clears throat> then that gets you up onto the charts. And if you get on the charts, that opens up a few other marketing angles. Plus, you know, you get to, you know, get to do a little bit of that, mm -hmm. as you say, and strut around <laughs> the house for a while, sometimes in a robe, sometimes naked. It, does, it just depends <laughs> on the day. It's so it all, it's uh, pre-sales for week one. So that's what all our marketing revolves around is trying to get people to go, go buy the book on Amazon before it comes out. It shows up. Oh, the day it comes here out. we go. This is, this is, this is brilliant right here. ScottSigler.com <laughs> slash how dash two dash help is uh, yeah, you have a whole like FAQ of explaining and it's got like a QA and a saying what helps you the most pre-order the hardcover yep. is what matters. I'll tell you what, man, anyone who's going to turn the horse crap that Justin and I, um, I'm, I'm going to buy me the high, hardcover right now. Anything, anyone who could take the crap that we're putting out there and actually make a story out of it is uh, someone who deserves, uh, what, what are hardcovers, 20, 30 bucks? Yeah, it's about, it's about, t about 20 bucks, I think 21 bucks on Amazon. But All right, here I'm I love, going right now. I, I do like coming on this show because just from watching the chat room, 
clearly this is my people yeah. <laughs> in some yeah. regard. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, the, the book is kind of written by someone who would live in this chat room on a regular basis if it wasn't writing all the friggin' time. So there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of double entendre humor. It's a lot. There's an enormous amount no, wait, of crass humor. For, in for this. some reason, it's only showing me uh, the Kindle on here. Uh, click on the I'm title in... again. Click on the title of the that, book. Well, and oh, then the, wait, wait. This one there. right here. That's the one. Well, it says Kindle edition. Click right. the title. I right, got it. It also says hardcover. Oh, there's right. hardcover. It, See hardcover download uh, Kindle edition. Yeah. All right. Yes. Now I do. Click it. Click Thanks, it. Jerks. There I, it is. All right. Fine. <clears throat> Let's do this. Add to cart. Uh, oh, I guess I got to sign in. Here, I'm going to go away while I sign in. And the reason you guys can't play the trailer is because there's dirty words in the trailer. Is that right? I didn't know that. I would have come prepared with a uh, yeah with a cleaner version. Uh, is it uploaded anywhere? It's uh, the, the clean version? No, yeah. it's not uploaded anywhere. All right. Because well, I'm all about the swear words. Then scottsigler.com slash pandemic. Uh, we, we're not going to show it here because it does have swear words, but it's also amazingly intense. So go ahead on over <laughs> right now to scottsigler.com slash pandemic when you are listening to this podcast and then pause the podcast if you're recorded and watch it. This just in, this mm -hmm. just in, if we do happen to crack the New York Times bestseller list, yeah, I've been informed by my business partner, A. Kovacs, I will write a Brock Sockman solo adventure <laughs> And give that away as an ebook on the show to everyone in the chat room. Well, then there we go. If you needed any Woo! other reason to go ahead and support Scott Sigler's new book, Pandemic, you have it right there. Here's another thing to support. Uh, everybody, come on out to uh, Borderlands. Yep. Yeah. Right? This, if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Saturday night, the, uh, this Saturday night, the 18th, uh, Scott's going to be there signing pandemic uh a kovacs his business partner and me i'll be there as well we can all hang out and have a good time so come on down to borderland saturday night uh the 18th in san francisco and the, the cali tour, the tour kicks off in Ch the san francisco then we're in chicago on the 21st that's the day the book comes out mm -hmm. and since we're destroying chicago pandemic screws chicago all the hell up so if you're in the chicagoland area check that out but just go to scottsigler.com look on the right hand side of the page there's a column on the right-hand side that shows all the tour dates, and if anybody wants to come out and flash a little bit of this, you know, that's, mm -hmm. all, that's all good and fine. We'll have a good time. And we go to the bar so, after uh, every tour date. Every one, we go to the bar. <laughs> yes. Yes. See, Although, that's Scott to actually the told me, uh, I mean, it, was, it was after Dragon Con, and we, we want me, A, and Scott wound up being at, like, the, eight, the Atlanta airport for a couple hours, and, and you gave me the best advice that I've yet to follow by the way okay about fan events and and your drinking consumption at said fan events it is it is the Sigler rule for alcohol consumption and and what as you as you said to me and I'm sure you've said to people uh, a million times mm -hmm. you are drinking what two the, the two Bud Lights yeah because I know exactly how much alcohol is in two Bud Lights mm -hmm. and one shot of Tuaka that's it Those and that's the, it that's it and, and, and you will be happy to accept that, right? And right. then at any point past that, you can be free to buy Scott something, but he gets to decide where it and goes. And at no point does someone come up to you with a glass with anything in it and, you, and go, here, I bought you a shot. And you say, what's in that? And they go, don't worry about it. Just have the shot. It's fantastic. Don't drink that. No. Don't drink that. Yeah, that's idea. Carney Cow trying to give that to you. Yeah. Don't take it. it. Hey, mister. Why didn't you I come noticed on over here, you're yeah. vomiting your shoes out through your nose <laughs> while you're on the plane, mister. And you got a show tonight. That's not going to go over very well. Yeah. <laughs> that's my bad Carney Cow impression. That's good. I yeah. liked it. Pandemic. Hey, uh, Justin, do we do we have another sponsor? Because uh, there was some. I know there's some other housekeeping things. I just we know do. We do. We do. We do. Brian Ting. Tell you what, man. Ting.com. It's a hell of a service. Service so nice, they named it once. Ting.com. That's, that's their motto. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's uh, NSFW's brought to you by it. It's the no BS mobile service. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk. Uh, there's two things that are dominating the news. Chris Christie's bridge scandal and all the BS going around with these here mobile carriers. Well, Ting's here to solve it. They're going to say no BS from here on out. It's an MVNO reseller of the nationwide Sprint network. You wonder what T-Mobile's made a lot of noise lately, being like, hey, we'll pay your, your early termination fees. Ting says, don't call it a comeback. We've been here for months, probably not years, but like a, definitely a long time, longer than T-Mobile. They'll pay your ETFs truly and completely contract-free once you get over to Ting. T-Mobile can't do that. 
when you port on over to Ting. Simply purchase your device through Ting, port your number, then submit your final bill with your ETF detailed from your previous carrier. Go to ting.com slash ETF for more information. And they got everything covered for you. No overage penalties, no add-on charges, no mysterious line items on your bill. Like you ever get your cell phone bill and you see a line item like, you know, C period cows meth or RL Stein's port. And you're like, where the hell did this come from? I don't know. Ting does away with this. Very, very simple. Powerful online account control. And how about this? No old customer support. One eight five five Ting FTW. Call that anytime between eight a.m. Uh, and eight p.m. Eastern time, and a real person will pick up. So do me a favor. You for, here's how I'm gonna give you the whole. You get to freedom by following these steps. First, purchase your mobile device from Ting, which you will receive in two to five business days. Or how about this? Bring your favorite Sprint phone all on over to Ting, like the iPhone four or 4S. Check out the list of uh, eligible phones by going to nsfw.ting.com. Ting will even help turn your old device into cash and help you move on to Ting. After you activate your device with Ting, you're going to have the option to select a new phone number or port an existing one. Ting will break out your rates by minutes, text messages, and megabytes and bill you at the end of the month for what you use. Visit ting.com, or sorry, nsfw.ting.com. Save money, better manage your mobile usage, Check out their savings calculator. Tell you, you don't believe me? They got a calculator. Trust that, jerk. And see how much your co- you or your company can save. NSFW viewers will also save 25 bucks off your first Ting device when you sign up. Again, nsfw.ting.com. Start saving today. Uh, hey, man. Smooth so, uh... as butter. <laughs> It was, it was perfect. Everything's great, sir. Welcome. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, crap. I was actually trying to do the movie draft a minute. Uh, I, I, we went long, and I still have a whole bunch of other stuff to, to talk about. We have, um, uh, they're, they're, you know, they sold out of that first run of uh, We Are Chat Realm shirts, and they're thinking about doing another one at uh, Teespring <clears throat> with that nice. dope-ass design with the, with the, the crest and the here. shield. Do you? Yeah. Do we have the, the Chat Realm shirts? All right, go if, you ahead, go to, if you go to teespring.com slash chat realm dash crest, uh, man, that's how we'll know. The truth is, I would say, and I think this is legitimate, uh, I, this is probably the best shirt we've ever had in our clubhouse that's not just the straight up diamond cl- d- club symbol. Like this whole crest thing looks awesome, and nobody's going to judge you. You can walk anywhere, you can get backstage at concerts, you can go. do anything. Oh. You can fly. I'll, I'll, ju- that. I'll judge everybody, so I'll keep judging people. That's fine. Yeah, this I don't think nice. you can keep it. Yeah. It's Patrick's, but <laughs> that, uh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what is the what is right on the bottom there? Die. What is this? Uh, D I A F. Uh, that stands for die in a fire. fire. <laughs> okay, that's lovely. That's friendly. <laughs> Traditional greeting. It's the love. Uh, on the yeah, show. And, by, and by the way, we don't we don't make any money off of this. This is this is a chat realm thing, not a Brian and Justin thing. No, this yeah, is you yeah. guys. That ain't, that this ain't is us. by for enough chat room. We're not going uh, to the people, well are, yet again to bilk you of more money. Yeah. I came no. to do that today. Yeah. I exactly. I am Scott's to turn to bilk you. <laughs> I am a bilker. I bilk. That's what I do. Sergeant Bilko. Sergeant Bilko. Bilk yes. and bilk alike. Uh, hey, Justin, do you want to talk about my favorite review of Andrew Maid's show? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, 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 all right, fine. I mean, the one that was sent uh, to us in confidence? Well, it's on the internet. I just thought it that was on the internet. Line. There's a 14 year old blogger. I didn't, I mean, look, just because if someone sends me something doesn't mean I assume that it's all got to be in secret. It's True. all this secret pants. It makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, the uh, uh, all right. There's somewhere out there. If you can find it, good on you. There is a review for "Don't Trust Andrew Maine that's written by clearly a, a 14 year old that has. I don't think it's uh, a 14 year old. Also, <laughs> what? No, no. it's got to be. I think it says at the bottom that they have supported independent arts and cinema for 10 years. <laughs> there's a precocious maybe little one. 17 years old? I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's it, it, Anyway, it, it has one line. Uh, it's got about, a money line. It, basically, it's a very positive review of Don't Trust Andrew Maine, which, of course, premiered last night on the A&E Network. 
Uh, it will uh, another uh, power rock block hour of uh, Don't Trust Andrew Maine next Monday at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, but he and that stuff's free online right now. You go to AETV.com. You can watch both those episodes. I'll tell you what, man, we, we did a live stream viewing party and I, uh, literally my face hurt from grinning by the time it was over. Like to see one of our own do do so well just made my day. It was amazing. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no, that review took umbrage toward people who uh, were criticizing television it, magic. Uh, would you like to paraphrase <laughs> the quote? Brian, Let, uh, let's, let's yeah, also understand here. that there's a term that either me or Brian would use personally or condone publicly, uh, but in the the phrasing of the quote, it uh, it it its ridiculousness tickled our fancy. Uh, okay, hold on. You know what? I'm gonna use that word to search for it in my Gmail. <laughs> while there's he's, a while he's uh, searching, can they, can we buy these? I'm sorry. Can I buy one? Uh, buy one? the chat room T-shirts. Yeah. Are yes. they back up on Teespring or? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They're right there. They're up. Like, like it, oh, okay. I think it, it queues up for another run. Like it doesn't say. Like I'm seeing the words "buy it now" right now. For oh, here we go. They, the way Teespring works is you get a bunch of people who say they'll buy it if, it if if enough do it, and then they do the run. So right now it's at four sold towards the goal of 30, but you could click buy it now and then make it happen. Excellent. And uh, okay. And here, um, yeah, so 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 if we hit 30, which I'm sure we will, um, or they will, again, it's not us. Uh, so there's, there's a choice quote that said, uh, I'll try to change as many of the words as I can. <clears throat> yeah. Well, do, do we do we want to come up with with uh, with a substitute for the offending word? Okay, I don't want to get all is about this that a word. Verb, a uh, noun or an adjective? It's a, okay. My opinion is this: Should you have issue with t television magic, uh, or <laughs> should you have issue and say that TV magic is not real? and is ruining magic in general, then you are a British cigarette and your magic <laughs> is inferior. <laughs> How about that? that, that That's that, good. That go That's right? good. That puts it across quite well. Exactly. Yes. You are a British cigarette and your magic sucks. <laughs> very pickled. Uh, well, I said as is is inferior, very pickled. Oh, by the way, that's the, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, Brant will break that, bust that out <laughs> at the best moments. Like I was trying to make a Photoshop and he was kind of watching me like, yeah, how do I do the thing? And then it's like, I move it in position and I hear him quietly say, very pickle. <laughs> <laughs> like using it as, as an actual word. Uh, but I yeah, all right, so everybody in all seriousness, go ahead and check it out. iTunes, Amazon, or AETV.com. <laughs> Uh, Andrew was extraordinarily happy uh, with, with the response from Diamond Club. Uh, he came on the live stream that we did during the show. So please continue to support it. Uh, a at AETV is where you can let everybody know that you were really enjoying the show. This social media stuff does matter for new television. It very, 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 very much matters. Uh, so if you like it and you want to see more, which... I mean, hell, uh, I can't see why you wouldn't. It was a really fun show. Then go ahead and support it at AETV on Twitter. Movie Draft Minute. Let's go. Movie Draft Minute. Welcome to the final Movie Draft Minute for the winter 2013-2014 season. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. All good things must come to an end, and so does this season. Let's go check out the scoreboard one last time. Brian Brushwood's in sixth place with $226.1 million. Woo! Tom Merritt's in fifth place with $317.6 million. Jeff Kanata's in fourth place with $420.3 million. Casey McKinnon's in third place with $506.4 million. Justin Robert Young's in second place with $526.8 million. And in first place with $599.6 million, it's Padre Robert Balasar. And that is your final Movie Draft Minute for the winter 2013-2014 season. This is Roberto Villegas signing off. Dude, Padre SJ, the $600 million man. Well, you know, that, that was, was my, my, my theory going into it was you have to get over $500 million, and I did. And then that was certainly not enough. Uh, you know, it's almost as if I have the specter of uh, my regret hanging out um, behind me, over my shoulder, like uh, a creepy, shadowy priest. <laughs>
It's a, <laughs> the, or, in a pimp like, cap. I, to be honest, I thought it was the debit daddy just hanging out behind you. No. He looks good? Yeah. He looks good. Congratulations to Father Robert Ballasar, wherever you are. I'm you, glad uh, that the Puerto Rican leagues are over, and we can now get to the real movie draft, the summer movie <laughs> draft. The one true movie draft. Exactly. That's the only one that So matters. join us uh, for next summer's, or for, for the summer of 2014's NSFW slash this portion is up for sale depending on whatever the new show is. <laughs> movie draft. Uh, the Yes. Um, man, dude, it's a good time. I love the movie draft so much. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure they're already working on that. number of people are working on websites so that you can play at home. I know that T2T2 is working on a version. And I saw some chat where someone else was, was making an alternate version. It's freaking awesome. So there's that. Um, I guess, is, is that it? I mean, uh, I, I, by the way, I don't know if you saw, but I definitely did pre-order the book. And Scott, you are amazing and awesome and everything that's right with uh, independent authors who are out there Thank melting you, faces. Sir. Yes, we try, we, we, we try very hard. And sometimes they're offensive, like I was tonight, a little bit with the swearing. Sorry about that. That's fine. Perfect. Sorry about fine. the potty mouth. But uh, yeah, scottsigler.com slash pandemic. Watch the trailer because the naughty words they can't put in this show, you can put right in your ear holes and they sound just fine. It fits well. Shove it right in there. Shove it. Shove it up. <laughs> Shove it up. Yes. Take it. Take it. <laughs> salad. Uh, yeah. Toss you, you salad wanna, for lunch. You wanna, uh, uh, do you want to play us out there or you want me to do it on this end, uh, Jammer B? Yeah, I think it was go. a very good show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you gonna are you gonna push me? You got you trying to push me? <laughs> did I? No, I ain't trying to push you. Did I keep the belt? So you did. So I can do this. <laughs> Three-time world champion. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, man, amazing times. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys next. I'll see you next Tuesday. Dying a fire. And just NSFW. Oh, I'd rather. It's a heartwarming song. Die in a fire. Then to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood. Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you Naughty words in the chat room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. so confused by this rule structure. I can't find that's any the, consistency. I love you. <laughs>